Welcome to another episode of Monday Blitz. I hope that as you watch today's devotional, you are drawn to read the chapters of Matthew to experience your own word from the Lord, a beautiful opportunity to experience God in your life. Today, I want to challenge you with a verse in chapter 4. In fact, it's verse 1. In that verse, it says, Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. Uh, This verse just doesn't sit well with me. It just doesn't make sense why God would have led Jesus in the wilderness. Why would the Holy Spirit bring Jesus into the wilderness to be tempted? And the think that God did this intentionally just doesn't make sense. And as I wrestle with this, uh, I started looking at the words and trying to understand, make sure I was interpreting and understanding these words of Scripture. So what exactly does this English word tempted mean? According to the dictionary, it says to attempt to entice someone to do or acquire something that they find attractive, but know to be wrong or not beneficial. Now, this definition aligns kind of with my thought process, but I don't think of the things Satan offered as wrong or not beneficial. We all need food, we all need protection, and there is certainly a value in power and authority. So, what exactly was so important about this time in the wilderness, this being tempted by the devil. So I turned to my Greek lexicon to see if I could understand a little bit more about the Greek word behind this English statement, tempted by the devil. You know, sometimes words struggle in translation, and so I thought maybe I can find more info in that. So I found that the word means this, for the purpose of ascertaining his or her quality or what he or she thinks. In other words, to prove his or her character and steadfastness. Up to this point in the narrative that Matthew has shared with us, we know very little about Jesus' character. At his baptism, Jesus seems to express some recognition of his purpose and calling. Yet until the point, this point, the fulfilling of the calling has not yet been encapsulated into a singular focus. So here we are in the wilderness. Jesus is in conversation with both the Spirit and and with the Father. And he begins to understand the extent of this call to sacrifice. And Satan sets out at the same time to find out the quality of the one who has come from heaven to save humanity from herself. Just consider the gravity of the realization that's taking place for Jesus. His heart, his mind, and soul have to be tugged upon. It isn't just about dying for humanity. Many people die for other people. This is about defeating sin. This is about being the one true example. This is about being love incarnate. I can't wrap my mind around the magnitude of what Jesus must have been trying to take in in those 40 days in the wilderness. When the divine call collides with the limitations of the human body, there is a guarantee that there will be a physical reaction. Matthew says that Jesus spends 40 days and nights in the wilderness. Sometimes I picture this as Jesus was alone in the wilderness, but I don't think that's what is described by Matthew. There's no place where it says the Holy Spirit left Jesus alone. It says the Holy Spirit drew Jesus to the wilderness. Those 40 days, I believe, were spent in communion with God. And Satan chose to size up the opposition with three human weaknesses caused by the generations of human sinfulness that has caused such deterioration in our lives. First was the question and the challenge of the physical need of nourishment. Second was this need for safety. And third was power. In each of these, Jesus demonstrated that the Spirit of God is more than just physical food, safety, and power. Too often, humanity has brought Satan's, bought into Satan's lie that the only way 
for physical nourishment, safety, and power is some, for some reason submission to his demonic influence. So to enter this mission of salvation, Christ showed his quality and proved his character by total surrender to the only power needed to overcome Satan. You see, the Holy Spirit never left. And when Satan was sent packing through the power of the Holy Spirit, the angels fed Jesus. That same Jesus invites you and I to live. That same rich, renewing source of strength to live in the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is described as our comforter, our protector, our nourisher. And when Satan seeks to find out the quality of our salvation in Christ Jesus, let him encounter the Holy Spirit who is our nourishment, our safety, and our authority.